Forgive my rugged appearance. I just got out of bed. It's question and answer time. Okay, first question. How did you discover Lojban? Okay, well that was when I was actually uh, talking with a friend. Uh, we were both learning Spanish in high school. Uh, I think it was in my second year. In, uh, I guess it was 11th grade. And I was just thinking about how it's kind of arbitrary because like, you know, the second highest uh, amount of speakers in the U.S., of course, is Spanish speakers next to English. Um, so that would be a good language to learn. I'm not saying it's uh, not a good thing to learn other language languages, but at the time I was just thinking, well, you know, even if I learn Spanish, like Chinese is still the most popular language in the world. I'm going to have to learn that if I want to speak with those people. I'm going to have to learn French if I want to speak with those people. Wouldn't it be better if we all just had one language to speak? And uh, then I thought about English, of course, you know, being the world language, but oh, my experience with English has not been the best <laughs> as a native English speaker. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that was about it. Um, and then I, then uh, the next day or some time after that, some short time after that, I, uh, I Googled constructed language or I, no, I Googled. And then sometime after that, I Googled uh, invented languages or something like that, like a day or two after. And then uh, I think I got to a Wikipedia page on invented languages, and then somehow I got into Lojban, and I was just like, holy crap, there's actually something like this? Because I, uh, I was talking with my friend before, and I was like, well, what if like they were to scientifically analyze like the language itself? Like, what if you put language into a laboratory? And, uh, and made it like that. And then I found out they did do that. And then that, that was really appealing to me. So I started learning that. Uh, it was in the summer, I think, when I was reading Lojman for Beginners. I'd read like a chapter a day. And um, then after that, I kind of uh, read the CLL. Uh, not all at once, but parts of it whenever I would be confused. And uh, yeah, so I guess I got into it... A, about not quite a year before I made that first Lojban video. Uh, but yeah, that was about it. How much time did you spend learning it? Well, I'm still learning it. I'm not fluent yet. Uh, according to the quiz online, I did, I don't know, last time I did it, a couple weeks back maybe, or yeah, it was after, I did it after I, uh, or as I was working on the, um, the vocabulary video for the B words. Um, and I feel pretty confident I've got the B words down. Um, but yeah, I'm about at 20% fluency right now. Not much, but uh, yeah, so I'm still learning it. Uh, as far as the grammar goes, uh, I, I didn't really learn it fully until I started getting involved with the actual forums and community because there was there was some stuff and I learned this when I put out my uh, first grammar video which I had to revise and uh, create a another version of is that uh, there were a lot of things that I were uh, that I was confused on and and uh, yeah so I would say get involved with uh, the forums and community there are beginners forums that you can go to if you're confused about something, uh, and read the CLL. If you're confused about a particular structure word, I say that you should uh, you should go to that structure word in Vlasisku, uh, vlasisku.lojban.org, and uh, you know the dictionary, and uh, they will have a link right to the CLL, the Complete Lojban Language, and you can uh, you can go there. And it'll explain it in like full detail. That's like the best place to go when you're confused about any kind of uh, complexities in the grammar. I say read Lojban for beginners first, but the CLL is definitely worthwhile. Definitely. And how fluent are you from zero to ten? Well, two. 
I'm 20% according to the quiz. Do you speak any other language? Uh, English, yeah. Uh, I've pretty much not retained my two years of Spanish already. Uh, no hablo espanol. No. Nothing else really, though I would like to learn other languages. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I'm learning Lojban is because it provides these global cognates to all these different languages. So that's a very helpful reason that you uh, can learn Lojban is to actually uh, learn other languages and ease that process. Do you actually speak with someone in Lojban by voice? I do not, but they have communities that do. I have uh, seen and heard recordings of people speaking over like Skype and stuff. And uh, yeah, people can have real conversations in real time, so don't worry about that. Uh, I do not, personally. I'm not fluent, so you know I can kind of do it when it's written because then I can look up words and get translations and stuff. How long ago did you discover Lojban? Oh, it was about, um, yeah, it was about last summer, or not last summer, but the summer before that. Uh, yeah, I was like 16, uh, now I'm 18, so yeah, it would have been in 2013, yeah, about the beginning of the summer. And that's when I started reading Lojban for Beginners. How much time passed until you decided to actually seriously learn it? Uh, um, well, I tried to do the flashcards um, a couple months ago, I guess. I tried to just go through them, and I went through the B's and C's, and I got them down pretty well. Um, but, yeah, I wasn't really motivated to actually, like, well, I wanted to become fluent, but I wasn't actually motivated to uh, to learn the vocabulary until a couple months ago. Um, and, but but now I think that I'm now that I'm making these uh, these videos of the words with these pictures, I think that's really helping me in the process, and that's how I'm learning it. I pretty much got the B words down. Um, I had them down pretty well before because I did look at the flashcards, and I would recommend you look at the flashcards. Sometimes, uh, you know, interactive flashcards are better than a video. Uh, I made the video because I want uh, people to be able to just put it on play, and I want something that can just play and not be interactive like the flashcards. That way they can do it while they're doing other things. And uh, also the pictures, I think, I hope will be helpful to get cognate. What made you think that it was worth the time? I want to learn it because it's uh, primarily I want to see if I can actually think more logically and I can kind of ascend to higher heights. For me, Lojman is kind of a transhumanism thing almost. And um, also to learn other languages hopefully, although natural languages can be a lot harder. This is kind of a test language for me because the vocabulary is so small. If I can't learn this vocabulary, I certainly can't learn the vocabulary of other languages. What do you suggest to a non-English speaker? Um, they have uh, they have other stuff out there. Uh, I'm not. I am a an English speaker, so you know I don't know. I know that the wiki has a lot of different definitions in a lot of different languages. I don't think it really has a complete list of them. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Uh, it will be a lot harder if you're not an English speaker. Um, and that's a problem, although I know there is a pretty good Japanese following. I'm pretty sure there are translations of the CLL and other books into other languages. Whatever resources you can get your hands on, um, that should be a problem that I... That should be an issue that I hope the community will resolve in time. Um, I do see a lot of other definitions in other languages on the wiki, uh, definitions of Lojban words. So just get whatever resources you can get your hands on, I guess. Uh, maybe try translating some of the English stuff. Just um, learn as much as you can, I guess. I'm sorry, I wish I could provide better advice.
Do you think that knowing any other language could be useful to learn Lojban? Yes, uh, definitely, because it's derived from all these cognates, so it was intended to appeal to someone's uh, native language. Yeah, and it was, of course, derived from English, Spanish, Chinese, Russian, Arabic, and Hindi. And, uh, and so if you speak one of those six languages, you're going to have cognates for a lot of the words. I know I find a lot of cognates in just English. What about the contrary? Lojman useful to learn any other language. Yes, yes, um, I think I've already addressed that. Yes, because it has these global cognates, it uh, allows you to get cognates to all these other languages when you learn it. Where do you live? I'm in Florida, United States. Uh, yes, it's the sunshine state, and uh, we have a lot of oranges, and a lot of old people. Yeah. <laughs> we have kind of a retirement problem in Florida, because uh, a lot of people move down here because of, uh, because, you know, they want to move to somewhere where it's sunny for their retirement, and then they complain about the heat when they get down here. I don't know about elsewhere, but people in my country don't even know about Esperanto. That has been around for more than a hundred years, let alone Lojban. Do you have any suggestions on how we could help to make it popular? Okay, so, um, yes, there is. And, you know, I'm actually working on t-shirts for Lojban and, uh, hopefully other merchandise that will help get it out there. Um, I can't promise anything because it's a little harder than what I expected, but I'm trying, and I think I've got it down, I'm going to try to create whatever merchandise I can, uh, and I was thinking about, it's going to be, maybe I'll attach an image here or something, Lojban, uh, the logical language, then a line, and then Lojban.org. And I was thinking about that, and maybe make uh, some mugs or and some iPhone cases. And when people see this stuff, they might be intrigued, and maybe they'll go to the site. So that's a good way to get it out. Um, and I was going to hopefully uh, get as much of those out as possible. Um, I'm still working on it now. I can't make any promises. And I've been trying to, in a sense, kind of rebrand the language in a lot of people's minds, because a lot of people, it's like the, uh, the, XK, the XKCD comic. If you learned Lojban, your speech would be... Fluent and logical. Yeah, but it would be with the kind of people who learned Lojban. And so I've been trying to kind of, uh, trying to rebrand it as much as possible and try to make it a little cooler than most people would think it is. A lot of people are very interested in it, I think, but just not enough to be fluent. And if you look at other languages, try to learn a another language, there's a lot more resources out there for learning a more popular language. And uh, there are resources for Lojban, but it's primarily text-based and forum-based, and I've been trying to kind of uh, get it out there onto YouTube with videos, because videos are a lot more appealing to people, and videos are a very good way to get things out there, a very good way to advertise something. I like how you talk. Did you take any drama classes? Uh, I did. Um, yes, I attended a theater camp for eight years and uh, learned quite a lot. And I was, I've was i been in a good amount of plays. Uh, I did a piece of uh, Cats uh, a while back. Um, that was fun. That was interesting. I had no idea what was going on, but it was interesting. Um... <laughs> Yeah, and if you're interested, I did the, the Mr. Mistopheles song. The greatest magicians have something to learn from Mr. Mistopheles' conjuring turn. And we all sing, oh, well, never was there ever a cat so clever as magical Mr. Mistopheles. And so that, that was an odd play, but interesting. It was fun. Um, yeah, I, I had a great time uh, down there at uh, this uh, this local theater, uh, Kaleidoscope Theater in Florida, and um, 
Yeah, it was great. That place is like a second home to me. Uh, it really is. Uh, I have so many good memories there. Um, yeah, it's it's really got this atmosphere, the stage or, uh, you know, the film set. Uh, at first, <laughs> these lights are uh, not the best. Whether you're on stage or on camera, you always got to have these lights on you. Um, but I'm so used to them now, like any other person staring into this light would be like blinded, but I'm okay. <laughs> I'm used to it now. But yeah, I think that that theater camp helped me enormously in uh, bringing myself out and getting myself out on online and stuff, on video. Do you have any plans for the future? related or not with Lojban, that you are willing to share with us? Plans? Um, in college, uh, I'm planning to go into psychology because I'm just fascinated with the human mind. I love the science. Out of all the sciences I learned in high school, uh, that was that was the most interesting to me. Out of all the classes I took in high school, or, or all of school at all, Psychology was just the most appealing to me. For uh, the most part of the class, I had like a 100% almost all the way through um, because I just soaked up information. Uh, I didn't get 100% at the end. I could have done better on that final, but I did get a high A. And um, yeah, it was just like I soaked up that information and I, uh, I just loved that class. And... That was in senior year, and uh, I really, I like science uh, in the sense of, I think that uh, it's, it's contributed a lot to the world and a lot to our understanding, and I want to be a kind of part of that, even if it's to a small degree. What are your contributions, besides the YouTube videos, to the Lojman community? Uh, I try to help people out if they comment in their, um, in their lacking an understanding in some part. I try to help them out. Uh, I did create the Lojban forums. I mean, there are different forums, but I created uh, what I think is a more stylish forum site. How many Lojban speakers do you think there are around? Okay, well, I actually did kind of a calculation. I looked at, like, English Facebook speakers, the amount of uh, people who say they... Uh, fluently speak English on Facebook, and then the amount of English speakers globally, statistically. And I looked at, you know, Spanish speakers on Facebook, Spanish speakers globally. I did a few different ones and got an average. And then I looked at the Lojman speakers on Facebook, and then I did the calculations. And I figured out there's about 8,000 fluent speakers. Now, like I said, I think a lot of people are interested in the language. Maybe it's small people, you know, here and there, but I think a lot of people are interested in, they're just not fluent speakers. I'm very interested in it, and I'm not a fluent speaker yet. And uh, that's probably due to excessive laziness, because within a month I could probably learn uh, the vocabulary and become fluent. But I'm lazy. I really am. So don't blame it on me. Blame it on my laziness. How many fluent speakers do you know in person? None, unfortunately. And no one I've really talked to is much interested in it. So, are you planning to learn any other language? Yes, uh, I've already addressed this. Um, I hope to learn maybe, I guess, French. French sounds good. Italian, maybe. Uh, maybe Chinese, if you were just to want to get to the most speakers that you could speak with, it would definitely be Chinese. Have you ever failed in learning one? I guess technically Spanish was a fail. Um, I didn't really try that hard. Uh, yeah, I just took two years in high school, and that was what was required as electives. Yeah, um, I learned it somewhat, but not really. Uh, 
Yeah, <laughs> I don't really consider it a fail because I never tried to actually gain fluency. What, in your opinion, are the problems with Loge Bon? I would say probably it's nerdy branding. Uh, well, being a nerd is a compliment today, isn't it? Let's say it's uh, nerdy, nerdy branding. Yeah, like the XKCD branding. Um, not that he branded it that way, it's just that's what people think of when they uh, they hear it. I mean, listen to the name Loge Bon. Now, in Loge Bon, that's not a weird thing to say, it's just logical language. But any language when you first hear it is going to sound weird. Um, and I guess just the small amount of speakers as of now, that's something we definitely need to change. We need to outreach to as many people as possible and at least get them interested in it, at least get them to know about it, even if they're not interested in becoming fluent. Maybe they'll tell their friends and their friends will want to become fluent. That's what we need to do. Primarily, it's just the lack of an amount of people that speak it. Why don't they fix the Stella tear thing and other irregularities now that the Loge Bond speakers are few? That's a question I've asked myself. Um, I wish they would fix the Stella thing. Um, yeah, that's another problem with the language itself. I mean, it's not a huge problem, but uh, it is one thing that people say, oh, you said, you said there'd be no irregularities. Why you can't say no be irregularity, no irregularity? It's not really that bad. Like, there's no rule. Because, like, they just took these uh, these words, these structure words, these two-letter words, setebe and he, and then they just attached a consonant to them to make them the, you know, three-letter affixes. Um, so, like, there's no rule that says that they can't make one an R and the other three L's. Eh, but I wish they would have. Um, I guess it's just now a lot of the writings and translations and stuff use tear and I think a lot of the yeah a lot of the compound words definitely use tear um I read something on a forum one time that was like they really need to fix tear and make it uh, optionally tell at least optionally because the affix tell has been mistakenly used for uh, tear more times than it has been used as the affix for Stella. More times than it has been used for Locke. It's been mistakenly used for Te instead. Um, yeah, and so I would like it if they fix that, but I really don't think they're going to because so, many, so they would have to change all these writings and stuff. You know, the CLL and uh, Lojman for Beginners, the Holy Grail of the language, and... I get, they're very afraid that it's going to confuse people, and they're very afraid, the people in charge, like the Logical Language Group, they're very afraid of people getting confused about it by having different rules. So they're very hesitant about changing stuff like that. So I wouldn't expect it to be changed at any point. But it's really not that bad. If you could, would you personally change something of Lojman? Yeah, of course, I would change the tear to tell if I could go back in time um, and maybe, I don't know, change Stella to Stera or just take away the affix from Stella. I don't think it's really that necessary. Um, if I were to change something, um, you know, for the longest time, I did not like that the non-meaning names had end in consonants, um, but now I do understand the reason for that. Um, let's see if I were to change something. I can't think of anything really right off the bat that I would want to change. Um, I don't, I don't know. There's some stuff that I don't like, like, you know, the non-meaning names having to end in consonants with la. Um, I don't like that the compound words, the play structures can be changed because that kind of forces you to learn uh, new words to a degree. Um, even though you have kind of a reference, it's still, you know, it could be confusing. Um, but I totally understand why they do that, why they have the non-meaning names and in consonants, and why they allow the play structure for uh, Lujvo to be changed. Uh, so I can't think of anything really offhand besides, like, the tell-tear thing that I would want to change. 
Are you planning to teach Lojban to someone? Not personally. Um, if someone wants to learn, you know, I would like to teach a Lojban class someday. That would be pretty cool. Um, eh, I, I don't think anyone near where I'm at really would care to learn, though. What made you decide to do YouTube videos? Okay, I actually um, got on YouTube because I wanted to do editorials. Uh, some of my favorite people who do that on YouTube are uh, TJ Kirk. Uh, I also like Jacqueline Glenn. Um, just like satire, kind of like a George Carlin thing. I'm a huge fan of George Carlin. And um, I wanted to do kind of that. I wanted to kind of, because I had a lot of thoughts, a lot of rants and stuff inside my head I wanted to get out. Um, a lot of philosophies and uh, stuff like that. And my first video I actually, I wanted to get on YouTube for quite a while, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do my first video on. I wanted it to be, I don't know, significant. And anyway, it ended up being, it was in, I guess it would have been senior year, and uh, it was on a project that, I oh, what was it? It was, um, you had to, report on an issue in your community, I think, something like that, yeah, basically you had to uh, put out an opinion piece like that, and it could be any format you choose, it could be written, it could be video, and any time that I can do video uh, in a school project, I always do, <laughs> just about always, and um, because I love doing video, and it usually impresses the teachers somewhat, and uh, and I got a hundred on the assignment, and that was sweet. Even though the video, I look back at it now, and it's like, crap. I was so awkward on camera. And a lot of my older videos, I was like extremely awkward, extremely uncomfortable on camera. Um, uh, but you gotta learn. Yeah, so, my channel, I haven't done an editorial in a long time. But, uh... I mean, I still plan to do those. It's just kind of what comes into my head. I wish I had it a little more planned out, but it's just whenever I have an idea that I feel somewhat good, whether it's a review, an editorial, uh, talking about you know an educational subject like Lojban, um, I just kind of run with it, run with what I think will be good, what I think will be uh, entertaining. Um, yeah, and I, I just wanted to kind of get myself out there, uh, and, um, yeah, it was pretty much it. I've heard all these, uh, you know, uh, these, uh, great stories, uh, where people, you know, will get big on YouTube and make a living off of it and, uh, meet their husband or wife on YouTube and, uh, <laughs> hasn't happened for me yet. Um, but, hey, maybe one day I'll get, uh, uh, rich and find love. You can only hope. Um, but I think YouTube has been very good to get, kind of get myself out there. I can get myself out there in video a lot more than I can through just text. Um, I'm more natural on camera than I am through text, I think. Which is probably the opposite for a lot of people. But for me, um, video is a lot better. And I think it reaches a broader audience that way. What are the results of the sapir Whorf hypothesis up to now? Um, still a hypothesis. Uh, you know, they've done studies, and uh, it's probably not as bad as, like, uh, the whole Newspeak scenario in 1984 where people are just, like, controlled by their language, people could probably still comprehend that they were being oppressed, even if they didn't have a word for oppression. So, I think that more psychologists have gravitated toward the weaker version of the hypothesis. Um, but it does strongly influence you, because they have done studies where, like, they'll take someone who uh, has a word in their native language, even if they're speaking a different language, if their native language has a word like chair or something, and the chair, like chair is a, a masculine word in their language, 
More often than not, they will describe the chair with masculine qualities. Ooh, the chair is sturdy. The chair is stable. The chair is strong. And if it's feminine, they'll be like, ooh, the chair is sleek. The chair is slender. The chair is very pretty. <laughs> Something like that. Um, but, yeah, and uh, they even have uh, some races of people that uh, grow up in a language that, like, there's this one race of people that doesn't have words for left, right, up, down, forward, or backward. They just have words for north, east, south, and west. And the way that their brains function, it's like they have this internal, uh, this internal compass. Even if they go inside, somehow like they just always know which way they're facing. And so they've kind of adapted to their language. And that's why I say, don't worry about the place structure in Lojban. A lot of people get um, worried that, oh, I'm not going to be able to remember it. The human brain has a very remarkable way of adapting to things like that. And so, basically, uh, you can actually read this in James Cook Brown's... Uh, he wrote these papers shortly before he died. Um, they're very fascinating. that are on, actually, the Loglon site, if you want to check that out. Uh, they're very interesting, because, I mean, he worked on the language for, like, 45 years, or he, uh, he saw its development for 45 years, at least. And um, so, I mean, that would be extremely interesting and I, I know his uh, his writings were very interesting and he was talking about well if the weak version of the sapir warp hypothesis is correct and it's just influence then the language this you know future transhumanistic universal international language that people may speak in the future it'll just be up to choice really it'll just be up to the choice of the people so if the weak version of the hypothesis is correct, which it seems more and more like it is, um, we should focus more on what makes a language good, what's, what makes communication good, and less, less about learning it. Because I see that a lot of people are like, well, it's harder to learn because of the play structure. It's harder to learn because of the affix is. But once you learn it, once you learn it, and I don't think it's even that much harder, um, regardless, once you learn it, and if people in the future grew up in this language, that would just be natural for them. Play structures would be natural, you know? And forming uh, tanru compound words uh, on the fly and, like, you know, inventing new vocabulary within their heads, that would just be natural to them. So I focus less on le the learning, not that that's important, it's very important, but think about, I always think about like this future society that's united under this one language. Not that I think that natural languages are useless. Okay, just like I don't think learning Latin and Greek to a certain extent is useless. Um, there are a lot of like roots in those that, uh, that appear in our language. So it can teach you a lot about our language, about the etymology of it. Just like, uh, you know, if a future society spoke Lojban, they could see roots from English, Spanish, Chinese, Russian, Arabic, and Hindi. Um, and then they could see roots uh, beyond that. What the languages are ancient to us now, you know, like uh, Greek, Greek and Latin, or, uh, or Egyptian, or whatever. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, even though those are dead languages, they've been archived to a very good extent. So I think uh, natural languages, if we were to ever adopt Lojban as a universal languages should be archived. And Google has like a project where they're archiving, you know, all these small languages so they don't die out. And I think that's great. Um, I'm all for that. And, you know, we have so many, we have so much archive of these languages now, like this is an archive. People can look back and see this as an archive. If they really wanted to learn English in the future, in a future society where nobody spoke English, they could still do that. We have plenty of learning materials, and I'm sure they could be translated into whatever language they were using in the future. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> I digressed. Uh, what are the major differences between Loglan and Lojban? Actually, actually, um, before that, uh, I think you were asking, like, basically, what have we found out with Lojban about the sacred warp hypothesis? Um, <sighs> not too much, uh, unfortunately. 
Um, people do say they can think log more logically in it. Uh, I've been able to think more logically in it, I think. I've been able to see the world from a more uh, natural perspective. And by natural, I mean that a lot of meaning um, comes from humans. It comes from subjectivity. We form a lot of meaning. And a lot of people don't understand that a meaning, for the most part, is subjective. And Lojban, not that you can't express meaning in Lojban, but um, I think it was in James Cook Brown's writings, uh, he said, or maybe it was somewhere else, um, I read a constructed language, if you're talking about, you know, one that's ideal for being a universal language, it should assume the least about the world as possible. And I think Lojban tries to do that as much as possible. Um, and the reason for that is so that you don't make assumptions about what a speaker wants to say. When a language makes assumptions like that, it really bars communication. It really takes away from that. And so, um, even though Lojman has an ambiguous grammar, an unambiguous grammar, the vocabulary itself, the words itself, try to be as ambiguous as possible. Like, you know, you see words like... Uh, Bachni, a cow, bull, bovine, steer, ox, uh, whatever the ten different words you can translate into Bachni are, uh, you know, and because they're all generally the same thing, and the thing is you can, uh, you can specify on those. You can specify on those, uh, you know, you can say, you know, male, uh, you know, Nakni, Bachni, uh, male, cow, bull, Fetsi, uh, Bachni, a female, cow, a female bovine, a cow. Um, and so it's, it's a lot better for the root words to be as ambiguous as possible because they cover up a lot of semantic space that way. And so, um, I don't know. We, maybe if we get more fluent speakers, we'll find out more about that. Um, I really haven't read too much about it, unfortunately, although that's what it was designed to test. I think that if people spoke this language, they would be more inclined to think logically and naturally about the world. Um, that's my opinion, based on having learned a lot of the language. Not fluent, but having learned a good amount. Uh, not that they wouldn't not think logically, or that they would just become like a superhuman race. We can only hope... Uh, the, you know, the whole transhumanistic aspect uh, is interesting to me. It's very appealing to me, but I seriously doubt that would happen. Um, we have plenty of fluent speakers, and they're not, you know, these higher beings that are so much more intelligent. But I think it can allow for more intelligent and natural thinking. That's what I opine, at least. Okay, what are the major differences between Loglan and Lojban? Okay, Loglan, to my understanding, the compound words did not work very well. Um, I believe they did not have affixes for them. They would kind of create a portmanteau, however you pronounce that, and just kind of mesh them together. And it was very bad, it was very ambiguous. And so some of the team uh, of the Loglan Institute that was working on it at the time in around 1987, they were wanting to change it, and I'm pretty sure it was to add the affixes in there. And uh, James Cook Brown did not like that. And uh, he he did not want the affixes, affixes. Presumably, I presume because, you know, well, the reason a lot of people don't like them today is that you have to learn the affixes in addition to the root words. Even though I think that they help so much more, and I think it makes uh, Lojban a much more usable language than Loglan. Um, other than that, the vocabulary, uh, I believe the vocabulary in Lojban is more globally derived, although uh, Loglan, I think, was. I'm not, I'm not too uh, fluent in Loglan. I'm not too uh, savvy in Loglan. Um, but, yeah, it, there was a copyright dispute in 1987 because James Cook Brown, he uh, 
he filed it like a copyright suit uh, because he didn't want his team to go off and make a different form of Loglon. And so they had to change it to Logebon and they had to rework the vocabulary, which ultimately I believe was beneficial because they they did more, they globally derived it more, to my understanding. Uh, other than that, they're pretty similar. If you look on the Loglon site, you definitely recognize it as being very similar to Logebon. But um, it is kind of more old, uh, I will say. The rules are a bit different. You'll just have to investigate the, the nuances for yourself. Do you think there will be any reunion between the two? No, and there doesn't really need to be. Um, Loglon is really just an older form of Logebon. Logebon is called the workable version of Loglon, or the uh, uh, Logebon, a realization of Loglon. Um, so really, it's just kind of an evolution of Loglon. There doesn't need to be any reunion between them. I will say they are very similar, but I think Logebon works a lot better from what I've seen. Okay, so that's about it. I hopefully will be doing more of these in the future. I would really like to, and um, you can just, if you want me to respond to any questions, just put those in the comments, and I will respond to them in the next Q&A. Um, what I would really like is to get some video responses. If you can do that, that would be cool, because um, I've seen other channels do that, and th I think that's really cool. And um, also, um, try to... Get a little more variety this time. Logemon is fine. Uh, there's only so much you can talk about it, though, you know. And um, try to ask questions that you would really like me to respond to on camera, not just like little short ones that you would uh, that I could answer in a comment. Um, and that's about it. Sorry for all the uh, the ums and stutters. This was live. Uh, I definitely didn't want to script this. I felt like that would be a kind of stupid, disingenuous, but, um, it was fun. Uh, I like interacting with my audience some. I want to do more, definitely. Um, and hopefully it'll grow the channel. Uh, I think if there's anything that I have going for me now, it's probably that, uh, that because I'm a smaller channel, I'm able to respond and interact with my user base more than, uh, these larger channels. So I want to do more of that, and I want to get any kind of uh, questions about anything, video questions, uh, comments, whatever, just leave them on this video. Uh, unfortunately, YouTube doesn't allow the video responses anymore, uh, but what you can do is you can paste a link down there, and since this is a smaller channel, I'll be, I'll be able to see it. It's not going to be bogged down by a bunch of other comments. So yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, um, I really appreciate it. I really like to have anybody else I can have on this channel. And yeah, see you next time.